All right, here we go. It is time for a brand new episode of Student of the Gun Radio. I'm your host, Paul Markle. Rules for thee, not for me. Yes, indeed. And in case you've uh, been living under a rock here recently, or you've been distracted by the uh, the the tin can collapse uh, out there in the uh, the North Atlantic, uh, well, you you're supposed to be. That is the that's actually the. Uh, that was actually the plan. The plan was for you to be distracted by that, so you wouldn't be paying attention to something else. But uh, we are not going to be distracted here. No, we're not. And uh, we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about open carry during our homeroom. Uh, we're talking about marine finishes and ballistic sledgehammers, all that and more on today's super delicious episode of Student of the Gun Radio. Welcome to Student of the Gun Radio, planting freedom seeds since 2013. Here we don't just talk about guns and gear, we also discuss current events and politics. Because guns are politics. Now, sit back, relax, and allow today's episode to drift ever so gently into your ear. Please welcome your co-hosts, founder of Mastermind Media and Consulting Group, Jared Martin, and the shipping owner, Zach Martin. Now, give it up to your beloved host, the Pimp Hand of America, Professor Paul Markle. Yes, indeed, it is I. It is I, and it is Jared, and it is Zachary. What's up? What's up? Jared is in a new. He's in a new studio. He's moving around. He's a moving target. You need I'm to get some posters or something. Some people up on set up a studio, so I figured if I've already got the equipment, let's bring it here, test it out, and see what happens. Yeah. There you go. You need, like put up, put up like a bookshelf or some posters or something. So it's yeah, so we're clean. that's the next step. Oh, speaking of which. Look hey, over my that? shoulder. What's over my shoulder? Butthole filter. Right there. Oh, right there, yeah. <laughs> ah, yes. I, I, there you I installed the a hole filter. Oh. Yes. Yeah, indeed. For those of you that don't know, well, you just need to hip yourself. But for those, go back what two episodes or something like that and listen to the episode. review of the week section. Yeah, well, not only that, but I mean, go back to the Glass Case of Emotion Studios in the where we had that in. The, we were doing lives from the the studio in Biloxi. Episode Student of the Gun, episode number thirty four. Go listen what? to it. <laughs> what really? That's how far back? I don't know. No, you just wait. I don't think we did it on the. I think that that was done exclusively on the either the morning mindset or it was one of the video segments. Yeah, it was on the, it was on the video segments. Uh, that we That's did. right. Yeah. I was going to say, because yeah. episode 34 is shotgun semantics, and I was like, what? <laughs> I just made that up. I <laughs> pulled exactly. it up that up fast. Good job looking that up quickly. We yes, have the, um, remember when we had the douche nozzle of the week? <laughs> did we have a douche nozzle of the week? Yeah. It was, was that actually a thing? Park Service Director <laughs> blames threat of terrorism for mall closing during shutting down. Oh, jeez. Oh, man. 2013. 2013. Jeez. Go ladies. back into the archives. Wow. Maybe the we should just start. Go back and start at number one or number 10 or number 20 or something and start doing best of. So I don't know. Can can people get those the uh, on their on their normal players like their no they can only get them on like studentofthegun dot com yeah yes. that's right you can't go back I think I was it fifty you go back fifty I think yeah on, it's the fifty most recent I believe normal socialist media or normal podcasters or catchers or whatever all right let's get into it uh, we've got a uh, a Q and A if you are watching in the uh, in the Discord in the student of the gun Discord uh, we would love to hear from you. Do you have a review of the week, Jared? Jared? It is not in the Crickets. notes. Looks like his face is frozen. Is his camera frozen? Lift up your hand if your camera's not frozen. All right, there you go. No, the, the answer is no. The answer is no. No review of the week. Okay. All right, well, let's get right into the Duracoat Finish Firearm of the Week then. But a but a bum 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 Yes, indeed. I was uh, actually, I was perusing. I was perusing the uh, a couple of different uh, firearms websites uh, 
firearms manufacturer websites. And I noticed that, uh, well, this isn't anything new, but that there were still companies that sell that sell uh, marine shotguns. And I don't mean the 590A1 for jarheads. I mean, like salt water, going out on boats and stuff. And what they, uh, what they generally do is they put either some type of a, a, a chrome or a polished nickel. Well, not really polished nickel, but uh, some type of a stainless finish. And it's generally not super shiny stainless. It's, it's like a matte stainless finish. Um, and why do they do that? Well, you should know. Uh, the reason they do that is because when steel is exposed to salt air all the time, it rusts. It rusts fast. And you have to, when I was on the uh, Marine Detachment uh, in, in the USS Forrestal on board a, an aircraft carrier, and we, I was, we had an armory filled with rifles and shotguns and pistols and machine guns and all that stuff. And our primary duty, we, we cleaned those guns about 100 times more than we shot them. Uh, because, well, there's salt air, right? You got to keep them clean. You got to keep them lubed. And we did it all the time. Uh, when I was working as a bodyguard way back when, when I was working as a executive protection agent, one of our clients, oh, I'm going to have a yawn. Don't do that. One of our clients had a boat and uh, on the boat, uh, they had we had security on the boat. And there was a safe on the boat that had long guns and short guns. And, well, the, the short guns were Glock 17s. The long guns consisted of Car 15s, Colt Car 15s, and Remington, I'm pretty sure it was the 1100 Tactical. There were semi-auto 12 gauges. And I remember when they brought them from the boat to the command post on land, to be stored in the safes there because, I don't know, they were doing maintenance on the boat or something like that, and it had to go into, like, a dock. It had to go into a dockyard, and they're like, we need to get all the guns off the boat. So they took them off. They brought them in, and uh, the G-locks were essentially spotless. There was no rust on them at all. Uh, the, the Car 15, the only place there was rust was... I, there was like a screw, one flathead screw. I'm trying to think of. There was there uh, there was a tiny, small amount of rust on the the car 15s, but the Remingtons, uh, the Remington shotguns, the 1100s, they had uh, standard Parkerized barrels, um, and there were rust spots all over the place. There was a, I mean, what they were, it wasn't like, you know, it didn't look like it was like left at the bottom of the ocean for two years or something, but you could tell. Um, and uh, my, the reason I'm bringing this up during the Duracoat Finish Firearm is if you have a standard shotgun or a standard rifle or a standard carbine or whatever, uh, and it's going to be used in, uh, well, if you live in Florida, whether you're on a boat or not, and if you live on land in Florida, <laughs> you're surrounded by moisture and salt water and, and uh, high humidity. You might want to consider a marine finish for your gun. Like, yeah, but they don't offer the gun I have in a marine finish. Oh, guess what? Guess what? What's that? Well, you can go to this little place called DuracoatFirearmFinishes.com. Yes, indeed. And you don't have to choose the gray or the silver or the chrome or whatever. Uh, you can choose any color. You can choose any color you want because if you apply the Duracoat to your gun, if you do it correctly, uh, it will essentially become da -da -da, a marine finish. Yes, indeed, it will become a marine finish. Why? Well, because Duracoat is a rust-proofing finish it is a corrosion resistant finish and if you do so i just thought that was something uh, that uh, many people uh, you know a lot of folks will shy away from uh, a shotgun with a marine finish on it because they don't want a 
shiny, a big shiny gun. Some people do. Some people are like, mm, no, nah, I don't want a, I don't want a silver shotgun. I don't. That's something. Not something that I want. You can do it if you go to the the badass. You can do it in Gray Wolf or Coyote oh, Brown yeah. or OD Green or Parkerized, like a park color or. Yeah, you can do a Parkerized color, and uh, then it'll look look like it came from the factory, only it'll be 100% corrosion resistant. There you go. Uh, that's a little, a little, a little walk down memory lane for you guys. All right, and uh, well, I guess it's time for the, well, for the mid-roll. Yes, indeed. <laughs> Uh, we, we already mentioned it, but right over, if you're watching on the Discord, right over my shoulder there, it's my right shoulder, and it's backwards on the camera, but that's okay, is the uh, is the A-hole filter. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, if you don't know the history of the A-hole filter, it is a, it is a storied history, <laughs> and uh, we had a lot of fun with that. We, we used to have maybe too much fun. Uh, we, we we would do our live uh, our live videos from the old studio, and we had right right behind me. I had a high point banner, and the the it was a grand old time. Oh, it was a grand old time, and I didn't even. Have, the great thing about it is I never had to say anything. As somebody would jump in, they're like high point, and. Then, <laughs> <laughs> and the grad program and the normal, the, the the regulars and the grad program members would be like, whoosh, and they would swarm them. Uh, and 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 the 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 imbecile, the RIA, the random internet a hole who jumped in and said something. They were like, ah, what are you? Doesn't everyone agree with me? No, no one agrees with you, you turd. Mm -hmm. And see, that's why they do it. They do that. They jump in there and they're like, bah, 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 high point, expecting everyone to join in and say, yeah, you're you're right, buddy. You're not right. You're an idiot. Jokes you're an a-hole. You. And you got caught. You got caught in the a-hole filter. That's why it's there. It's there. It's there to catch a-holes. And it does a really good job. I sent that picture to Charlie yesterday. I mean, yeah, that's funny. Yeah, I put it up and I sent it to Charlie. And you're like, well, what what is going on behind you there, Paul? Well, I'm glad you asked. Uh, what, and we announced this. What did we announce it last week on the bonus hour? Yes. Question mark about the uh, team room West. Something like that. Oh yeah. Yeah. We, or we did we that did we do it during the public? I don't remember if it was public or private. But go ahead and reiterate mm, anyway. I can't. Anyway, anyway. So what we're doing? What we're creating? Uh, is essentially a uh, oh yeah we said we, it's a like the pipe hitters hang out and so forth so yep that's uh, I'm, I was decorating I'm decorating team room west with various posters and flags and banners and stuff like that so you can when you come down here you can feel right at home there you go all righty then yes indeed oh JJ did five buckle Jer or Zachary did something. He did something uh, good. He took the USMC leadership traits and he compiled them into a single video. And it's on Juxi.com right now. J-U-X-X-I.com. And if you'd like to avail yourself to that, then you are more than welcome to uh, get in there and, and view that. And uh, the newest video, well, we'll talk about the newest video after well, after these messages. Attention new listeners. We produced a complimentary online training course called Seven Training Tips That Could Save Your Life. Get instant access by joining the Student Lounge for free at studentofthegun.com. Do you watch Student of the Gun TV, read the blog, and follow us on Facebook? If you answered no to any of these questions, you are wrong, but you can easily fix yourself. Go to studentofthegun.com to find everything SOTG. Yes, indeed. That is what you can do. That is what you should do. That is what we are allowed to do. We will allow you. I will allow it. I will allow it. Yes. So go to studentofthegun.com and check it out. 
Oh, I was a busy beaver last week. I was on the uh, Lock and Load Radio with Bill Frady, and that was on, was it Thursday or Friday with Mark? I can't remember. Uh, with uh, on Armed American Radio. And <laughs> Greg, is, his producer, called me out. All right, I, I, got, I got a confession to make to you guys. So when I'm on with Mark, it's a live radio show. You say, duh, that's not a confession. Well, the confession is, is during the commercial breaks, I take my earbuds out and I always grab my guitar um, so that during the, you know, five or six minute commercial breaks, I just, I'll just pick on the guitar, right? I'll just strum the guitar and, and it, cause I hear those, I've heard those commercials a lot, a lot. <laughs> so I don't listen to the commercials. I take the earbud out and I kind of half listen in the background and I, and I strum the guitar. Right. And I use, I usually don't, I don't do the acoustic. I'll do, I'll grab one of the electric guitars and it's not plugged in. It's just, you know, the ambient noise from the electric guitar. So we came back from commercial and they unmuted my microphone and I had my guitar in my lap and Mark was talking and I started strumming it. <laughs> <laughs> I was strumming the guitar while Mark was talking and Greg jumps in my ear. He's like, Hey Paul, you need to ease off the guitar. We can hear that. It's coming through your microphone. I was like, Oh, okay. Sorry. Oops. My bad. <laughs> I felt kind of bad. I was like, mm. I thought it was quieter than it was when it was coming through. So, so if you listen to me on Mark's show last week, you might have heard a little bit of guitar in the background. Um, and I was on with uh, our buddy Bill. Actually, I'm going to be on with him again this coming week. Uh, I'm pre-recording with him today uh, for his show. But it is time now for not that, not any of that stuff, but for a Brownells bullet point brought to you by our buddies at Brownells. All right. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Now, if you guys pay attention to what I have been saying and what we've been saying for literally years, um, when it comes to the shooting sports, when it comes to the uh, to shooting and guns and so on and so forth, generally, the summertime is slow. And you say, that doesn't make any sense. That's when I like to go out and shoot. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, I get that. I get that. But when it comes to sales, most people spend money on stuff like gun stuff in the fall and in around Christmas time and so forth. And in the summer, they're out doing other things. They're vacationing with the family. They're they're whatever. You know. uh, and it used to be, in a normal world, manufacturers of firearms and firearms and accessories and ammunition and all of that stuff, those people, they understood the annual cycle. They understood the annual sales cycle. And they and it was very predictable. And then and they made... You know, they produced for it and they prepared for it and so on and so forth. Uh, and that's been kind of screwed up here the last several years uh, because, well, do I need to tell you why the model's been screwed up? But the good news for you, the good news for you freaks and freakettes out there, is if you're looking to spend some ducats or if you're looking to do a, a gun build or what have you, uh, the fact of the matter is, is they actually have a lot of stuff that's on sale right now. Uh, pieces, parts, components, optics, et cetera, et cetera, uh, are all on sale right now because it is summertime. It's the middle of summer. It's right around the 4th of July. People are thinking about 4th of July vacations and summer vacations and, you know, this is and that's and dad's busy with the, the kids are out of school and so forth and they're not selling. So the, the sales are down, so what, when sales are down, things go on sale. 
I'll give you a great example. Uh, you guys know that uh, recently we featured the the ARMED, the Armalite Rifle Minimum Effective Dose, and the lower receiver upon which that was built was a KE Arms Unibody Lower. Well, they have those in stock right now uh, at Brownells for sixty nine bucks. Now that's a that's a strip lower. It doesn't come with the trigger group and everything, but uh, sixty nine bucks for a for a complete lower uh, with the stock and pistol grip and everything is actually a pretty good deal. It's actually a pretty good deal, and they have things like bolt carriers, uh, bolt carrier groups on sale, and slides and pieces and parts and components and all that stuff. So uh, this is the time that we talk about hardware, and if you need hardware. Uh, now is the time. Now is the time. Yeah, and also somebody talked about. I was talking to somebody yesterday, and they're like, "What's the deal with ammunition?" And I said, "The deal with ammunition is, if it wasn't for Biden inflation, if it wasn't for the inflation that was created by the criminal spending of our government from twenty twenty one, two, three, and so forth, the criminal amount of spending, and I didn't say irresponsible. I said criminal. The behavior." of the the supposed representatives in dc has been criminal and that behavior has caused our dollar to be worth less and because our dollar is worth less inflation goes up and everything costs more if it wasn't for inflation ammunition prices would be back where they were in 2019 but because the reality of the economic situation, it's not. Now, ammo is there. People who say, oh, I can't find ammo are full of crap. Uh, people are like, oh, I can't, I can't find ammo. Yeah, you're not looking. No, when people say in, in this modern time right now, in 2023, oh, yeah, I can't find ammo. Uh, where are you looking under your bed? You're looking under in your couch cushions. Where where are you looking for ammo that you can't find it? Because I think what they're what they I mean have internet qualifier there that they uh, aren't including, and it's I can't find ammo for the price that it was in 2019. Yeah, I can't find ammo for the price I want to pay for it. I want to pay ten cents a shot for nine millimeter. I want to pay 80 cents a gallon for gasoline, but that ain't happening, Jack. So, but ammunition is out there. It is available. Uh, it's not the price that it was in 2019, uh, but it is coming down. Now, one of the things I have noticed is a lot of the, of course, if you go to your local store, you're going to pay more. Uh, there are uh-uh. still there's still some places I've, i I went to that one place in uh, um, where I left the black powder in Salt Lake City. I went in there and I was like, "Wow, I love an optimist, and the prices on this ammo are very, <laughs> very optimistic. optimistic on your part, yes, very optimistic on your part I mean up I know to the- one one of the indoor ranges here that also sells ammo is uh, the armory and they're in Sandy, Utah. Mm-hmm. They generally have decent pricing. The last couple of times I've popped in there. So if you're in the area and you're looking for a decent priced ammo, stop there. There you go. Let them know that Student of the Gun sent you. Yeah, that's right. You'll now, probably get nothing, but it'll be yeah. it'll be nice of you to They'll do be that. like, okay, and then <laughs> like, who's that? <laughs> they're like, and then yeah. No, the the. Of course, if you order it online, the the big X factor of ordering stuff of ammo online is how much is it going to cost to ship to you? Yeah, the ship. because let's face facts, that stuff's heavy. Um, and it is. It's heavy, and it co- and shipping shipping prices. Are, hey, Zach, are, are are is the cost of shipping going down? It is not. It is continually going up. So yeah. Surely. The, the price of postage, the price of FedEx, the price of UPS is not going down. It goes up. It's going up. So all I can tell you is this. Look, man, uh, ammunition is out there and it is available. It's not fantastic barn burner prices. But the, if you need ammo, if you're going to train, if you're going to go to a class, if you're, I mean, you should be training. You should be going to classes. You should be practicing. Um just budget for it, man. 
That's it. All right. Now, let's real quick, we're going to get into the, oh, and speaking of discounts on ammunition, <laughs> if you need high quality defensive ammunition, ammunition of which you would use to defend your own life or to hunt or to to shoot flesh targets, uh, targets that are made of flesh, go to Defiant Ammunition or Defiant Munitions, Defiant Munitions uh, dot com. And when you go to defiantmunitions.com and you check out at checkout, use the promotional code S O T G. And you're going to get a little bonus. Yes, indeed. So if you use the promotional code S O T G, you're going to get yourself a little bonus and you're going to get yourself some high quality premium ammunition, uh, ammunition on which you can rely. So there you go. That's a little, that's a little cookie that we're giving you guys a little cookie. All right. Uh, Zach recently uh, just put up uh, a new video. Uh, Jared shot the video. Zach produced the video. And it is about the SA-58 from DS Arms, also known as the FNFAL. And it is a ballistic sledgehammer. And Jared and I, uh, we shot a video from all different angles to disprove the Internet the RIA nonsense that a 308 is it recoils so heavily and and is there so much recoil that you can't shoot a 308 rifle rapidly Jared would you say that that is a fallacy you say that it's not yes. it's internet fallacy yes. yeah we 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 did straight straight on side shots and and if you watch the muzzle barely comes off target it barely comes off target uh just it moves only a small we can play that video right here can't we no oh, you can you can um but it, it's a three minute video it's a, uh and Dang, zach's gonna that long i don't remember it being that long zach's gonna put the uh the link for it in the in the show notes if you guys want to watch it if you want to watch it and share it and love it and so forth but the the fact of the matter is is we have this this weird fallacy in our modern world that uh that the 308 is a long distance cartridge now yes you can shoot long distance with it but uh used at close range it is a sledgehammer and you don't need to shoot someone 18 times or, or four times or three times. Um, generally, if you shoot somebody with a 7.62 NATO once or twice, they get the point. They, they get the point. So, do you want to do that? I, I don't think. We'll just we'll just let the video go. Uh, but there you go. So that is up for you, and it is available, and it's something that Zach put together, and I think he did a fantastic job. And uh, there you go. All right, it is time for me to be quiet and you guys to pay attention to what Zach has to say next. ShopSOTG.com is the perfect place to go if you are a student of the gun. Whether you want to expand your brain, increase your marksmanship, or help keep your family safe. All that, plus the pimp hand brands that you love. ShopSOTG.com has almost anything that an American patriot would want education, enlightenment, and entertainment, and we're open 24-7. Check out ShopSOTG.com today and see for yourself. Yes, indeed, ShopSOTG.com. And right now, it's officially summer. The summer solstice has officially passed, which means that you probably want to get outside, right? Do some stuff in the sun. Well, we have the perfect thing for you, because right now on ShopSOTG.com, we finally have the beloved colored sling bullets from ReadyMan.com as well as these Goliath and Standard Survivor slings. So if you want to get outside, practice your David and Goli- versus Goliath skills, get yourself a red, green, purple, yellow, orange, or other green bullet, <laughs> sling them, figure out, pretend that you're in the freaking you know, biblical ages. Right? Uh, it's, it's, it's cool. It looks, like, it looks like Easter candy. Yeah, Easter yeah. eggs. It looks like Easter candy. Yeah, yeah, that's, w- but it's w- it's not. Have, don't eat them. Yeah. you're not allowed. You're not allowed to eat them. Je- Jeff sent me the pictures of the the new bullets, and mm-hmm. we it was the the purple ones, the opaque green ones, and the yellow ones. And I was like, man, that would have been perfect for Mardi Gras. Oh, no kidding! Yeah, yeah. would have. But we didn't have the time. But, but we have them now. We we, we the important thing. The thing is, I wouldn't advertise those for Mardi Gras because somebody would go. 
onto into French Quarter and start slinging bullets into the crowd. It says explicitly on our sales page to not throw them at people. So do not throw <laughs> We are absolved of all issues. <laughs> You're absolved of all responsibility. Okay. All right. That's how I choose to, to look at it. Yes, exactly. And also, while you're on ShopSOTG.com, you can pick up a copy of The Four Pillars of Fighting by James Yeager, a pimp hand approved version of that book. Uh, if you have not picked that book up by now, you should. And if you like to drink water, do you guys like to drink water? No. Occasionally. You're like, no, I don't like water. If, if you'd like to have clean water, if you'd like for your family to have clean water, Well, you might want to think about picking yourself up a Lifesaver Jerry can or a Lifesaver, the Wayfarer, uh, the pack model, the backpack model. Um, So that way you always, if you have a water source, you will always know that it's clean and drinkable and it's not going to make you sick. Go. That's not a big deal. Is it? Is having clean water drink a big deal? No. Oh, the government well, will always make the sure that I have life, but the, the government will always make sure that I have clean water to drink because that's yeah. their job. Hey, one Isn't that right, thing Michigan? that I I recently saw was the fact that as draconian as it is where some of these states had the rainwater collection laws, they're starting to roll them back now because they realized that was a bad idea. <laughs> I, I thought that was an interesting thing. It's like, well, what led them to that conclusion that they couldn't figure out before they even uh, decided to limit the citizens' ability to collect rainwater in the first place. On their own property. Yeah. Yeah, so the rain falls on my property, but I don't own the rain. That's not your water. You you, yeah. you don't you don't have the right to it. Well, you it's are the, leasing the, from the, the government state. owns the water. The state owns the water. We don't want to get into that right now. So but, the good uh, news is, is that uh, New York is actually one of the big ones that I saw that's doing that. So good job. Woo-hoo. You know, you know how you roll back draconian, tyrannical laws like that? You stand up for yourself and quit being a freaking slave. What? I can't do that. I'm not allowed to stand up for myself. I, I have to do what I'm told because I, I'm a slave to the government. They own me. Oh, okay. All right. Cool. All right. So the, there you go. Make sure that you have your family has clean water to drink. Uh, student of the gun homeroom brought to you by student of the gun university the sweetest melon university in america all right i saw something yesterday (laughs) oh i was in public i was out in public and I was walking you across in public. I wasn't drunk in public. I was sober in you public. You were drunk in the bar and they threw you into public. And they threw me into public. That's right. No, I was sober in public and I was in a grocery store parking lot and I was walking from my truck to the store and I saw an older man and woman, I don't know, 50s, 60s, putting their stuff in their car. And I noticed that Homeboy had a holster. I could tell because it was a brown leather and Kydex outside of the waistband holster and as i approached i i noticed it i saw it and and uh, as and i got closer and i i, I for at first i saw it and i thought oh he's he's like reaching for something and his shirt came up now his shirt was tucked in his shirt was deliberately tucked in so the holster um like i said it was a bright you know what it was there, there are these companies that there's this uh, this one company from Missouri, uh, and then then after that company got famous, twenty to thirty other holster makers decided to make similar products. <laughs> so this holster that I was looking at was a similar product, <laughs> and you're like, okay, get to the point. It was empty. The holster was empty. Did he forget his gun? Maybe I don't know. <laughs> like, so I'm trying to figure out how. Uh, you, so like, maybe he went to the potty and forgot it, and then so. But his his shirt was tucked in. So that's the thing. Is so yeah. homeboy dressed himself, tucked his shirt in. He's got a holster on the 
on the outside of his body. It was the outside of the waistband holster. It wasn't a tuckable holster. It wasn't an inside. It was an outside of the waistband holster. And it was empty. And I thought to myself, you, you know, it's funny. If that was on purpose, the, the, the best thing that you could do other than just like look at it and walk away, the best, the second best thing you could do is to walk up and say, hey, dude, you forgot your gun. Because <laughs> then it's either going to be, oh, crap, thanks, man. Or no, I didn't. I meant to leave it. In no, I, no, it's locked in the it's locked in the safe where it's supposed to be. Uh, but I, I, I like I, what? It was one of those moments where I was like, what am I seeing here? What is what is going on? Yeah, it, it, it was it, it, it. We have these well-intentioned people in our community i guess you could say they're like it's my second amendment right and like yep it sure is to wear an empty holster it's my second amendment right to open carry an empty holster why this is what i'm gonna tell you kids they're like whoa hang on a second paul and there did you hear him did you hear him in the background Right. Maybe he was he went into a non permissible environment where he wasn't allowed to have the gun and I'm running out and running out and out. So he took it out and put it in the glove compartment of his truck. First of all, well, the the middle of a grocery store parking lot is not a non permissible environment. And the grocery store that I was that I was going into is not a non permissible environment. And this is when the other RIA, you hear them out there. They're like, well, maybe, maybe that, 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 that place, um, doesn't allow or, or restricts or prohibits or, or frowns upon open carry. And then. So. Don't open carries, <laughs> but the, just just the idea that you would deliberately tuck your shirt in, have a holster on the outside with no gun in it, and be walking around like may, maybe you know you're like well maybe it was for a cell phone I'm like no it was an actual holster. Maybe somebody stole his gun and he didn't know it. <laughs> and he didn't realize it. Maybe was, yeah, someone took his gun and he, was, he didn't realize it. Like, <sighs> people. So so what you're trying to people. teach people here is not to open carry with an empty holster. I thought I that was a good idea. I don't know the advantage of, of open carrying an empty holster. I'm not really sure what the advantage is there they're like well the potential bad guy will see the holster and assume that there's a gun in it (laughs) and and because he sees the holster he'll assume that there's a gun in it and then run away um no i figured it out what you have an empty holster and you're also concealed carrying the bad guy will be duped yeah he'll think oh that guy forgot his gun so i i (laughs) And so, and you're like, aha! Surprise, gotcha. yeah. CF. <laughs> yeah. So oh you, that's gosh. when you reach into your left pocket and you're like, surprise, CF. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you, other than if you're going to carry a gun, carry it. Uh, and. Uh, well, you know, you're like, oh, do you never open carry? Actually, sometimes I do. Um, I don't generally in municipal areas because you just don't know how many like weirdos and crybabies are around. Uh, if I'm out on on the ranch or in the country or whatever, I don't worry about covering it up. I don't care. You want to know what uh, is, I learned something that's really amazing. There's a school about five minutes from my house that they have active security guards and the active security guards don't just have guns. They're also open carrying so that the students can be And the purpose of that is this. So the students could be comfortable around the firearms, comfortable around 
armed good people. Uh, yeah, around people that have guns and whatnot. And I was like, wow, that's that's kind of amazing. And that's the exact opposite of what you see in the public school era. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, I don't have a problem with that. I think it's great. I think kids shouldn't be afraid to see guns. Uh, that firearms in the hands of responsible adults should be a norm. So, yeah, there, there you go. Then. That's your that's your lesson. Because the, the – uh, like the Wally world here in town has a sign that says, please refrain from open carrying. See, cause they can't tell you that you're not allowed to bring your gun in. Yeah. And they, and they, in, in, in this area, if they put up a sign that said, don't bring your gun in, people would be mad at them and would tell them to go fornicate themselves. So they're like, please refrain from open carrying. Okay. Why? Because people will see it and they'll be nervous. So I have to change my behavior because we, we could go on for a while. I have to change my behavior because there's weak people and because weak people's weak emotions or their weak feelings will be hurt. Like, you and, know, that if, if I did the open carry dealio and they saw guns more often, they would actually be better off because they'd be afraid less often. Well, so and I'd if be we give them a service, right? <laughs> and see, it goes it, it goes all the way back to our discussion about open carry that we had a long time ago, way back in Biloxi. And I said, look, if you're the only one doing it, you look like a lunatic, right? That's the way it is. If you're the only person open carrying, you look, you are perceived like a nut job. You're a weirdo. If everyone is doing it or all of the armed citizens in your area are doing it, then it becomes the norm. You're like, yeah, but what about, you know, the bad guy can see your gun and he's going to snatch it from you. I'm like, yep, I get that. But if as all he's the- snatching it from me, I'm going to drive this knife right through his eyeball. Yeah, well, I, I, yeah, you need to be prepared to kill people that touch you. Um <laughs> to destroy people that have touched you in public. You don't allow that. But um, the other thing, though, is is if all of the armed citizens are open carrying and you have a like a bad guy is like, I'm going to go snatch that guy's gun. You, he might think, yeah, but there's also 12 other people standing around here. 12 other armed citizens standing around with guns. So if I do that, those other 12 people will probably shoot me into the ground. <laughs> and so, you know, it's, it's, it's people make choices. On one hand, you know, James was super against open carry, hardcore against open carry. And he had his reasons, you know, the bad the tactical it, advantage and the bad guy can't see you and, and so on and so forth. Yeah. But. And I think part of it might have been the way that, well, I don't know. I can't speak for James. Yeah, I don't speak but for him. Part of it yeah. might have been because uh, the way that some people act when they. Oh yeah, carry. yeah. So. The 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 derps with the with the the Taurus and the and the in the uh, nylon one size fits nothing garbage holster. You know the nine dollar on sale garbage holster, it, and it's always the you know that and that's the thing is the open carriers generally are the people who spend the least amount on their they. they they're carrying garbage. Um, and I know not all Tauruses are garbage. I just threw that in there. Um, but uh, one of the yeah. things that uh, I've, uh, were you done? Were you in the middle of No, story? no, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, one of the things I've always been confused about, because this open carry concealed carry argument has been like, at least since I've been an adult and I'm paying attention in probably like decades. Mm-hmm. And one thing that I've, it, it, it's not congruent with each other is this. If you listen to the best way to show people that an armed society is a polite society, well, that would be for people in your daily life when you're just mulling around, you hold the door for the the lady that's walking through you, that kind of thing, right? You go out of your way to be nice to some people. And the best way for people to realize that an armed society is a polite society is for you to be doing that while you're open while carrying armed. a firearm. Yeah, because they can see, hey, this dude's got a gun, but he's normal. 
right? He's actually nicer than most people. He tips better. He holds the door for me, blah, blah, blah. The, all these things that we know the gun culture does. Yeah. Um, so it, it, it's always confused me. Like I, I get it because of the, the way that some people act when they're open the carrying. Tactics and if you're and, the yeah. only one that, right, right. That, that makes sense. And then the tactics behind it as well. But it's like, man, if we really want to, um, bring our culture back to its roots, then open carry would probably help that as long as people are acting like they normally would in daily life. Right. Well, also what's the top of the four pillars? What's the top pillar? What's the number one mindset 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 before tactics, before skill and before gear mindset. Yeah. So who open carries every single day and nobody has a problem with it. The popo, right? You're like, ah, oh, yeah, but that's different. Cause they're wearing, they're wearing uniforms. It's like, yeah, but they're trained less okay. than I am. Okay. <laughs> so um, most of the time, if, if I go to my local coffee shop, probably at least one, one or two times a month while I'm in there, the the local the detectives come in and they wear khakis and polos and and they open and they open carry guns right they 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 clip their their badges onto their belts and they wear a polo shirt and khakis and they wear and they open carry. See the part of the problem with that is with citizens with the citizens telling you with the the reasonable firearms instructors telling you never open carry and you shouldn't and it's a terrible idea and it's tactically unsound if it's tactically unsound why are all these detectives in polo shirts and khakis walking around open carrying well because they're police and so a police officer can't be disarmed by an attacker by a bad guy only you only the stupid peasant can be disarmed by uh uh an attacker, a police officer can't be disarmed by a bad guy. Well, no, I, I mean, obviously not. I mean, I mean, they could be, but, but they won't. Why? Cause, because bad people are afraid of the police. <laughs> no, they're not. Hardened criminals are not afraid of the police. So, but the, going back to the mindset thing, when we tell citizens, when the citizen is told, don't like by the NRA or the NSSF or the OSA or the MPA or the IRA or the, the BLM or whatever, when the citizen, <laughs> is that, was that enough three-letter acronyms for you? When the citizen is told, you should never open carry, it's a bad idea, you have no business open carrying, if you do, you're wrong, blah, 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 but People who are employed by the state, agents of the government, can and should. Because it's okay for the normies to see guns in the hands and on the belts of the state. But it's not okay for the normies to see citizens carrying guns. Why? Because people who work for the government are more important and more special and have more rights than the peasants because the state should have guns, but the peasants shouldn't. It's okay for agents of the government to be openly armed and moving about. And here's the crazy thing, Jared. So the, the Wally world there, they got the sign that says, please refrain from open carrying, right? We don't want that. We can't let people see the gun. People shouldn't have to see guns while they're shopping. You know how many times I've been in there and the local PD has been in there? A lot. What's your point? Well, if, you, if your biggest fear, and, and they've said that, that's been a statement. Our customers should not have to see guns while they're shopping. Okay. They're seeing the guns on the hips of the popo when they come in, they walk through the front door. Well, that's different. How is it different? A gun is a gun is a gun, right? Well, it's different because police are supposed to have guns and boom, 
bingo, zowie, shazam. That is the hypocrisy. The hypocrisy is, well, the police should have guns and the peasants should not. Peasants can't be responsible gun carriers. The mindset, the lie, the narrative is peasants are irresponsible and shouldn't be carrying guns. But when, when you go to work for the state, when you go to work for the master, when you put on the uniform, you magically become a responsible, well-trained, super-duper, I don't know, whatever. It's all bull crap. But that's the PSYOP. That's the PSYOP right there. People shouldn't have to, our customers shouldn't have to see guns while they're shopping. So you have your greeters stop the local PD at the door and tell them not to come in? No. We actually have a special parking spot out front, right up front, that says reserved for our law enforcement partners. So what are you saying? That guns are bad and people shouldn't see guns? Or guns are okay as long as the government is controlling them. Then they're okay. You see, that mentality is the exact opposite of the founding of the United States of America. The founding of the United States of America says the people are supposed to be the ones in charge and the state is subservient to them, not the other way around. I'm not subservient to the people who work for the government. They're not my masters. I'm not their slave. They're my employees and they need to shut up and go fornicate in another direction because I don't want to hear from them. That, ladies and gentlemen, is the history of America. And the history of the world is that peasants need to shut up and the king and his soldiers are allowed to have swords and lances and bows and crossbows and guns. That's the history of the world. And in the United States of America, we said we're going to do something different. In a representative republic, we're going to do something different. Because everywhere else in the world, the king and his soldiers get guns, and the peasants don't. So your, my question for you is, do you want to be a peasant, or do you want to embrace your heritage and live and function like a human that has liberty? There you go. Wow, all of that came from open carrying and an empty holster. That's funny. You're welcome. Like, thanks, dude, for that topic. Yep, yep. <laughs> thanks, brother. You never know where you're going to get information from or, or inspiration. There you go, inspiration. Speaking of inspiration, do you realize that, uh, you know, when people say, oh, do you believe that the COVID is not real, that it's not a real virus? No, I never said that. How I never said that, the, that left turn? the virus wasn't real. But what they did with the virus was a PSYOP. Do I believe that the little submersible tourist submarine actually imploded? Yep. And I also believe that the state used that occurrence as a convenient psyop and now we have proof well you don't have proof this just it's just a coincidence it's a coincidence that this happened jared story from forbes.com so it's a popular french magazine Four yeah four bays navy believed it heard titanic sub implosion hours after it started dive reports say U.S. Navy heard days ago what it thought to be the Titan, the Titan submersible implosion. Oh, uh, what now? Sorry, my, these ads are all over my screen here. Gone. Yeah. Gone. Yeah. The newest development in the confirmed loss of the submersible and its five passengers. So the Navy hearing that hours after it, its dive is the newest development, according to the story. Mm-hmm. 
The key facts are the anomaly consistent with an implosion or explosion was heard by a secret military acoustic detection system the Navy uses to track down enemy submarines. The sound was picked up just hours after the submersible began its dive Sunday and came from a location within the vicinity of where the submersible was when the communications went down between the sub and a vessel on the surface. The Navy began listening for the submersible as soon as it's lost its signal five days ago and shortly thereafter observed the sound. The Navy did not immediately respond to Forbes' request for comment. No, because the Department of Defense... So, if you guys... I I really tried not to get involved in this story, right? I tried not to... um, deal with it or, or whatever because i saw what it was it was a, it was it was a it was a huge distraction so what happened so on la- last sunday a week ago sunday they announced publicly all of the, all of the news outlets uh titanic submersible the titan the mini thing going to titanic blah 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 blah, blah. Uh, they've lost communication with it and they have 48 hours or 52 hours or 61 hours or whatever it was worth of oxygen right and we we need to launch a rescue mission and we need to find them and then how can we find them and blah 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 right and then who was on board and the whole thing about it was they used the playstation controller to operate it or some kind of garbage what anyway um so the news and the socialist media was filled for days with everyone like you know they're clutching their pearls and and they were you know rubbing the rosary beads and stuff and and they're like oh the the clock is ticking you know they only have so much oxygen left and the clock is ticking and and can we get to them and can we get to them and is there a chance and they got all these experts on they're like well if they have 60 hours of oxygen and and what's it going to take blah 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 they were dead on Sunday. Sorry. You're like, oh, that's that's callous. No, no. The US Navy, and as soon as the you know the the tourist group or whatever this thing says, they're like, oh hey man, we lost contact with this. We got no radio with them. And the Navy's like, yeah, because we heard it implode. We know what that sound is. <laughs> that That is the sound of a submersible imploding, not exploding, imploding, whatever, being crushed like a beer can, right? In the, and so they're like, wow, just because they heard the noise and it was in the area exactly where the submersible was and it happened exactly at the time that they lost communications with them, that doesn't mean that that that's what happened. So why, this is the question you need to ask yourself as an intelligent human being, on Sunday, leading into the Monday news cycle, because the news goes in cycles, and if you don't think that the criminals in Washington know how to manipulate the news cycle, you need to extract your cranium from your rectum. So rather than they knew, the U.S. government, the DOD knew the moment that happened. And then they're like, hey, we lost communication with this thing, and this is exactly where it was when we lost communication, and blah, blah. And then he's like, yeah, (laughs) there's a reason for that, because we heard it break. We heard the boom, right? We know what that sound is. So rather then the Navy come out and say, yeah, calm down with the whole, like, death clock, the oxygen clock thing, calm down with that, because here's the deal. They're gone. Sorry, sucks, but that's it. They're gone. No, no, what did they do? Well, this is a heart-wrenching story, right? The story of five, you know, tourists, 
billionaire tourists or whatever, but, um, you know, they're just wanted to look at the Titanic and, and now maybe we can rescue them. And, and, oh, and they went for days, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And then what acts, Jared, what was going on in the news cycle while everyone was distracted by the, the story of the rescue effort and can we find them? And, oh man, wouldn't it be amazing if we could, if we could rescue them? And, uh, what else was going on in America? I I think it was before it was either just before or the day, the same day that the news story broke that, um, Hunter Biden was actually apparently entered a plea deal. Or reached a yeah. plea deal. Oh, they knew this. Do you think that the White House hasn't been arranging for this plea deal for months? Yeah. They've been working on it. So, for all of you who who uh, are worried that you might accidentally have made a mistake on your 4473, don't sweat it. Well, as long as you're white and rich and your daddy's a Democrat. If you're white and rich and your daddy's a Democrat, don't sweat it. If you aren't, eh, probably going to be a bad day for you. So Washington Post. Got story, Jared? Yep. Hunter Biden reaches deal to plead guilty in tax gun case. President Biden's son, Hunter, has reached a tentative agreement with federal prosecutors to plead guilty to two minor tax crimes and admit to the facts of a gun charge under terms that would probably keep him out of jail. Probably. Any proposed proposed plea deal would have to be approved by a federal judge. Both the prosecutors and the defense counsel have requested a court hearing at which Hunter Biden can enter his plea deal or Mm -hmm. enter his plea. Yeah. This is from the 20th. This is from June 20th. When did the story about the the 22nd? Yeah, so it was just before. Mm -hmm. The probe was opened in 2018 during the administration of President Donald Trump. Since 2020, Republican politicians have repeatedly accused Hunter Biden of broad wrongdoing. In his overseas business deals, and predicated, uh, pre- I'm sorry, and predicted that the Biden administration would be reluctant to pursue the case. The terms of the proposed deal, negotiated with Weiss, a holdover from Trump's administration, were quickly dismissed Tuesday by congressional Republicans who vowed to continue investigating the Biden family. Papers filed in federal court in Wilmington, Delaware on Tuesday indicate that Hunter Biden has tentatively agreed to plead guilty to two misdemeanor tax charges of failure to pay in 2017 and 2018, a court document. So didn't, didn't the Democrats try to crucify Donald Trump for supposedly not paying taxes? Oh, for not their, their whole thing. Like he has to release them. And yeah, 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 yeah. Um, it, it's uh, rules for thee, not for me. A court document says that in both of these years, Biden was a resident of Washington and received taxable income of more than $1.5 million, for which he owed more than $100,000 in income tax that he did not pay on time. Prosecutors plan to recommend a sentence of probation for those counts, according to people familiar with the negotiations who spoke on the condition of anonymy to uh, describe elements of the case that are not yet public. Biden's representatives have previously said that he eventually paid the IRS what he owed. Oh, did he? Oh, first of all, I don't care about that. The, uh, really, I, I mean, I, the fact is, is he got all that money um, through graft and corruption through uh, from his daddy. Um, the but, second uh, court filing. <clears throat> oh, go ahead. No, the, the, the gun charge. So, you, did you see the the uh, the side by side comparison to black rappers that were that are currently in jail for um, falsifying forty four seventy threes? No. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. There's actually uh, I can't remember who it was. It was it was one of the it was either like NAACP or some one of the groups. They're they're like whoa 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 like. 
this guy, this guy, this these these rappers are all in jail because they got charged with with uh, falsifying or lying on a forty four seventy three to obtain a gun, and the president's white rich son gets probation. <laughs> yeah, duh. The second court filing. Keep is voting for Democrats. In that case, yeah. the letter says the defendant has agreed to enter a pretrial diversion agreement with respect to the firearm information. Handling the gun charge as a diversion case means Biden would not technically be pleading guilty to that crime. Diversion is an option typically applied to nonviolent offenders with substance abuse problems. Uh huh. Yeah, we, all we gotta cut will, him a break, man. Yeah. Prosecutors will recommend two years of probation and diversion conditions. The people familiar with the plea deal said if Biden successfully meets the conditions of diversion program, the gun charge will be removed from his record at the end of that period. Oh, well, we want to make sure he gets all the help he can get because he's just such a good guy. Such a good guy. Oh, well, if if you were wondering if, if the rules are for thee and not for me, um, We've got a story broke on June 26, 2023. NewYorkPost.com, and it's they're not the only ones. There's several sources for this, but uh, this is just one of them. All right. Hunter Biden prosecutor told six witnesses that he couldn't charge outside Delaware. Oh, oops. The federal prosecutor tasked with investigating Hunter Biden told at least six witnesses last year that he lacked authority to charge the first son outside Delaware and was denied special counsel status, according to an IRS whistleblower. And now the House Judiciary Committee wants to talk to them. No kidding. Delaware U.S. Attorney David Weiss made the shocking disclosure on October 7th, 2022, meeting with top IRS and FBI officials, contradictory contradicting sworn testimony from Attorney General Merrick Garland, IRS Supervisory Agent Gary Shapley told the White House Ways and Means Committee last month. He surprised us by telling us on the charges, I'm not the deciding official on whether charges are filed. Shapley recounted in his May 26th testimony, which the committee released Thursday. He then shocked us with the earth-shattering news that the Biden-appointed D.C. U.S. Attorney Matthew Graves would not allow him to charge in his district. Added Chapley, who said Graves' refusal to prosecute meant that Hunter, who is now 53, would not face tax charges related to foreign income from Burisma, the holdings company. And a Burisma, you mean the Ukrainian uh, oil, the Ukrainian oil and natural gas company? Yeah. And a scheme to evade his income taxes through a partnership with a convicted felon in 2014 and 2015. All right, let's just go ahead and stop right there. Here's the deal. This is this is what's this is what you need to understand. You need to understand that there's an there's an organized campaign to lie to you at all times. The U.S. Navy knew that the Titanic submersible, the Titan II, whatever that they they knew it was gone. They knew it was destroyed. Uh, on the moments, they knew when it happened. They could tell you, oh, right here, boop. That's when it happened. And then that happened, and then the company said, hey, we lost contact with them. We don't know where they're at. And they're like, yeah, no kidding, because, boop, they're gone. They held on to that information, and they let the news cycle, they let the news cycle run for days about the Titan. And everyone in the world was distracted by that. And while that was going on, you know, how many times have we said that the, the plausible deniability of the media, Jared, they're like, oh, no, we report on that story. When? Saturday. was It was in the Saturday paper. We did it one time Saturday. That, Like, yeah, but, but that's nobody's paying attention then. It's like when they release a news story Friday night it could, because they know no one's paying attention. They're like, yeah, we did it. You can't say we didn't do it. 
is it convenient? Is it just too convenient? And they waited four days. And they waited till Thursday, till the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Hunter Biden stuff was uh, was out, right? Was on the waning end of the news cycle. And this, and you say, well, I knew about it. I knew absolutely because I listened to Mark Walters. I read Ammo Land. I knew about the Biden story. You did, but the normies don't. The normies only know what's on top of their news feed. The normies only see what's the lead top story on their face in their Facebook feed or their Instagram feed. That's what the normies see. And for four days, everything, and even now, everything at the top of the normies Facebook page was the submersible. Everything at the top of the IG was the submersible. Every, for three, four, five days. And that's what the normies saw. And they know this. The people in D.C., the criminals in D.C. know that's how the news cycle works. And that's how they distract the masses. So that the people who still, the the imbeciles in, in your kid's school or at your work, who still will say, I think Biden is doing a good job. What? Well, there's no proof. That's all just Republican politics. What? Are you what? Are you kidding me? Why would you think that? Because that's what my TV told me. My TV told me I'm supposed to be distracted by the Titan sub. I'm supposed to hope and pray and and put up a ribbon or something that they find all those guys in the sub life. No, they're already dead. And everybody, the people in the know, know that they're already dead. The people in the U.S. government knew they were dead on Sunday, but they decided to sit on that information for four days. Why? What other information were they hoping to get? Well, they couldn't just come out and say, hey, we heard the thing pop at the exact time that it, they lost comms with it. We heard it pop. Goes the weasel because the weasel goes pop. Nope, they couldn't say that. Why? Why couldn't they? Well, because then it would be over and people would stop paying attention to that story. That's why. You're being manipulated at all times. You need to pay attention to it, and you need to understand it. You need to understand that it's reality, that the, the media manipulation coming from the government, coming from the White House, is real. The red-haired Chucky doll admitted it, man. The Chucky doll admitted that, yeah, we have daily phone conversations with Facebook regarding troubling posts excuse me i thought they were a private company that was allowed to do whatever they wanted well they are as long as they do what the fbi tells them to do google is a private company that can do at whatever it wants as long as it does what the fbi tells it to do zuckerberg can Censor anything he wants, as long as what he's censoring is what he's been told to censor by the White House. What? And the crazy thing is, they don't even hide it anymore. The normies are so distracted by crap, they don't even, they don't even feel the need to hide their lies, their psyops. It's real. And the only way you can defeat it is to open your eyes, pay attention, understand that it is. I'm looking for Rape of the Mind. I moved it. But if you haven't read Rape of the Mind by now, you need to. I, actually, I straightened up. See what I did? I like, whoop. You can't really tell. But Very blurry straightening. I put, uh, I, 
I got all the books and I put them on the shelves and stuff. I put the books on the shelves so they would be on bookshelves. Uh, and and the, I had a stack of books right here and I moved them. I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> it looks it looks more well organized and neater now, but I'm I can't reach and and grab it. So there you go. The the only way to defeat the psyop is to understand that it's real and it's happening. The only way to defeat the distraction is to understand that it's real and it's happening. And when you see it, when you open your eyes, when the scales fall from your eyes, then the lies are exposed. And when the lies are exposed, they don't work anymore. There you go. All righty, ready, ready. Oh, I, I've got a, uh, we've got a, um, a suggested student of the gun university podcast topic for you guys this week. And it is how to, I'm going to type this, avoid the flinch. Yes. How to avoid the flinch. Do I have a suggestion? Do I have um, an opinion about how you can avoid the flinch, whether it's the flinch with a handgun or the flinch with a rifle? And the answer is yes, I do. And if you want to hear that answer, well, you have to tune in to Student of the Gun University podcast. It is a short form, single topic, easy to digest, comes out on Thursdays. You go to Student of the Gun University podcast and follow that and you will get that information. And speaking of Student of the Gun University, we're actually kind of excited. I'm pretty excited. Uh, I've spent the last couple of days organizing and getting stuff together because we have a Patriot Fire Team training camp, which is coming up this coming weekend. We have several of you guys, several students of the gun, will be descending upon the, uh, the Ashley National Forest area of Utah, and we're going to have a Patriot Fire Team camp, a Patriot Fire Team training camp, and we're looking forward to that. Uh, and, of course, we still have, well, maybe not, of course, but we do have seats available, uh, a couple of seats at least, for the uh, Precision Rifle class. There's two of them coming up, two Precision Rifle classes, the end of July, last weekend of July, first weekend of August. And you can learn all about those by going to where? SOTGU.com. SOTGU.com. And if you are a grad program member, and uh, if you are a uh, graduate of the first program and you would like to get into the advanced class, contact Jared immediately. Contact Jared immediately. There you go. All right. Mm -hmm. That's all we have to say today or tomorrow on the Thursday special edition of Student of the Gun Radio. The bonus hour, bonus hour number one, uh, will be Thursday. And we're going to talk about more spy balloons and Biden wants your guns. So Biden wants your guns. And believe it or not, I know you might not have heard this, but there's more spy balloons out there. Hmm. What are we doing about it? I don't know. We'll talk about it tomorrow. Until then, remember... You're beginning once. But you're a student for life. Thanks for staying until the end. Want to water the seeds of freedom we planted together today? Head over to wherever you listen to us and leave a like, rating, or review. It makes a big difference. Have a show topic submission? We would love to hear it. Submit it to info at studentofthegun.com. A delightful human will get back to you faster than you can finish a one-box workout. Remember to check studentofthegun.com often for new and free content, giveaways, and more. Watch, listen, read, shop, and connect at studentofthegun.com. And remember, you are a beginner once, a student for life.